All right, so uh, thank you for joining us today, everybody. Uh, we are going to present to you nine struggles every t-shirt business faces and how to overcome them. My name is Andy Curtis. I am the operations manager here at Transfer Express. Uh, those of you who've been with us for a while might remember me from years back. Um, I am looking forward to giving this presentation today because there's a whole bunch of fantastic information in here. Uh, the funny thing about this is that uh, we're going to cover all kinds of info that you can use in a whole bunch of different ways. It doesn't have to be just for people who are brand new to the t-shirt industry. Um, these are things that will be uh, things that all of us need reminders on on occasion, even those of us who've been doing this for a little while. Um, we're going to cover a lot of um, a lot of tips and tricks and, and just a lot of truths that we have uh, uncovered over the years here at Transfer Express. So uh, I, I hope that everybody gets something out of this. Now, uh, the reason there was a small delay is because we are recording this webinar, and I had the wasn't recording cooperatively for a minute there, but we're recording now. So um, if you have to go or you want to review this webinar again later, we are recording it. It will be posted on our website. Um, you're also welcome to email us and request a PDF of the slides. We can do that too. Uh, however, we can assist you. Uh, in the meantime, a couple of you did see the chat box down there at the bottom corner. If you have any questions for me as I am talking, you're welcome to uh, type into the chat box. Um, I am a uh, chitty chatty person, so I will try to answer your questions. If I do miss a question, it's not because I'm ignoring you. I, if I miss a question, the uh, helpers behind the curtain will uh, chime in. So I have some cohorts who are listening in and watching who will help answer any questions. So without any further ado, uh, we are going to talk about nine struggles every new t-shirt business faces and how to overcome them. Hold on, bear with me, folks, for just one second. I'm still having a little technical issue here. Okay. All right. So uh, point number one is the uh, one of these truths that we're all guilty of at times. Uh, rejection happens. One of the first things that uh, anybody who's starting a t-shirt business comes across uh, is the fact that rejection happens. Um, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to be your own salesperson. You have to be your own secretary, your own CEO, all that good stuff. We, we wear all the hats when we're entrepreneurs. And if you're going to start a t-shirt business, you're going to run a t-shirt business, one of the things you have to accept right off the bat is that rejection happens. Um, this is one of the biggest things that holds people back from selling, that holds people back from moving forward. If you've got an idea and you've got the money and you want to start that t-shirt business and you want to start your line or you've got a, a line in, somebody who needs stuff and you, you've got that in for the t-shirt industry, that's great, that's fantastic, but you still have to be able to go out there and secure more business. We can't be afraid of rejection. It's going to happen to all of us at some point in time or another, and we could probably talk for 45 straight minutes on this topic alone. <laughs> but since we have a limited amount of time, um, let's just keep it at the fact that rejection is going to happen, and you can't let that keep you from moving forward with your business. If you're going to be a successful business person, you have to be able to take that rejection and then learn from it and apply the lessons. Uh, a great resource on this exact topic. If you've ever seen the TV show Shark Tank, sometimes the folks on Shark Tank actually talk about this, the rejections they've gotten and how they've overcome them over the years. And that's they have a lot of a lot of great stories in that regard. Um, on the topic of rejection, so here's the way we like to look at this is number one, define what you're selling. Be clear on what you're selling, be clear on what your product is, uh, be clear on what you're doing. Create your sales presentation, have your script or your stuff, your, your, um, the props you bring with you, the samples, all that good stuff. Have your presentation, decide what your price is to make profit, and stick to your guns. Rejection is going to happen. People are going to turn you down. Um, you may put together a fantastic presentation for a local high school and why they should use you and why they should let you outfit their local spirit shop. But... You don't know what's happening behind the scenes. There could be something else going down, and you might have had a great presentation, but the rejection happens, and there's two ways we can look at it. We can either 
be afraid then to ever reach out again, or we can say, all right, well, what did I do that I could have done better? And you move forward. Um, don't let rejection cause you to price your products out of profitability, though. This is something that entrepreneurs fall into, a trap they fall into, is, all right, well, I got to lower my price to be more appealing. Not to say that the first price you choose is always perfect, but be careful that you don't cut into your profits to the point where, why are you running a business that you're not making any money? So don't fall into the trap of, of deciding, okay, well, obviously I didn't get that job because I'm charging too much money, so I'm going to shave a little bit off the top. If you continue to do that, then you're going to get to a very quickly where you're not making any money anymore, and what's, what are you going to do? Um, uh, and of course, at this point, if you're starting a t-shirt business, I'm going to assume that you're pretty clear on what you're doing, that you're customizing apparel, that you're customizing wearables, you're customizing whatever it is that you've got out there. So again, be clear on what you're selling. Have your presentation ready to go. Have a script. Have practiced it. Get your friends together. Have, have somebody you can say, sit down and listen to me for a minute and tell me if I sound, if I sound appealing. Uh, set your price uh, and stick to it. And I've got a good story for you guys here. I know this text is probably a little bit on the small side, and I, I don't know how well you can see the pictures here, but this is the story is worth telling. So um, these are pictures off of our Facebook page from a customer of ours who, uh, it, it's a real brief story, so I'm just going to read this off to you real fast. So um, she tells us, I have to share, this was one of these customers that contacted me about a year ago for some brand wear. I hopped on Transfer Express, designed up a few things. She was super excited, and then she disappeared. I don't think much of it. Uh, it took me less than 15 minutes to give her four options. She messaged me last week to place a big order. She came in, picked out her items, dropped 2,800 bucks. Uh, we had it finished within a week. She was super happy. She just shared her photo shoot launching her new apparel line, and now I want her to model all my apparel. So the lesson to learn here is if, if this customer in particular had been too afraid to put herself out there and risk rejection, so this woman comes in, hey, I need brand wear, um, uh, need some ideas, show me what you can do, uh, here's my concept. If you're too afraid of rejection, then running with that, she wouldn't have ran with it, she would have lost the opportunity. Um, you can't be afraid. You have to put yourself out there. You have to run the risk. Um, and in this case, it only took her 15 minutes to jump on our website, come up with a couple ideas based on what this woman was asking her to do, and boom, um, you, you, can't, you can't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, it comes down to forcing yourself to speak, introvert, extrovert, public speaking or not public speaking. So. Um, Either way, so that's number one. This is, of, of our nine topics, this is number one. Rejection happens, and rejection, the fear of it, is something that holds people back, and you cannot allow that to hold you back if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, t-shirts or otherwise. All right, so number two is the world is changing. Stay current. Now, this is true if you're focusing on t-shirts, if you're focusing on screen printing, uh, if you're focusing on whatever kind of garment decoration you have in mind. This is a truth, and um, I, I cannot stress this enough to people. Our industry changes very quickly. Our industry changes consistently. Um, the, the trends that were around when I started 15 years ago are not the same trends in today's day and age. Uh, and it's funny because I, I've been doing this long enough to see things come into style, go out of style, and come back into style again. And uh, if you don't stay current, then the world will pass you by. This is not an industry for somebody who likes to set their feet and say, all right, this is the way it's done, this is the way it's always going to be, and this is how it happens. And that's it. If that's the mindset that you find yourself in, and this is not the industry for you because things change and you have to roll with it. So the way you handle this, the way you roll with it is number one, subscribe to industry magazines, stay current, know what's happening. We have a lot of fantastic, um, we have a lot of fantastic industry publications uh, for the garment decoration industry and there are all sorts of sources of information out there. These magazines are four of the top ones. Um, we love impressions. <laughs> As my helper is pointing out here, notice the cover of impressions. The model is wearing Transfer Express apparel and transfers. 
Uh, we love impressions. They're a great publication. Printware is another favorite. I, I love to keep up with printware. Um, these are definitely great ways to stay in touch with what's going on. And even if you're not a physical magazine type person, like I, I really am not a physical magazine type of guy. I always leave them places and forget I have them. Their websites, all of these publications, their websites are phenomenal. Write them down. Go find them if you're not already subscribed or if you're not already used to them or you've never seen them before. Go look them up, subscribe to them, and check them out. You will not be disappointed. Now, if publications aren't your thing, uh, if you're a people person or you enjoy traveling, uh, trade shows, attending a trade show, if, if you are going to be serious about starting a t-shirt business and you're going to do this and do it right, every t-shirt entrepreneur should visit a trade show at least once, at least at some point. Try it, go to one, give it a whirl. Um, my suggestion personally, I, I, I did my time on the trade show circuit. I, I love trade shows. I love presenting. ISS is a fantastic group of shows. The uh, people who attend the ISS shows are a great variety of garment decorators and garment warehouses, and there's always a, a lot of interesting people at the ISS shows. DAX shows are fantastic too. Um, NNEP, if you folks are embroiderers, the uh, National Network of Embroidery Professionals, those ladies know how to put on a fantastic show as well. We like NNEP. Um, everything Embroidery, ASI. Uh, if you are interested in a really big show that has everything under the sun, SGIA is always phenomenal. Um, I, I find SGIA sometimes to be so large that it's actually intimidating. Like I, I find that if I was going to be uh, not a presenter, if I was going to go to SGIA as an entrepreneur, I would definitely want to get the guide ahead of time and plan out who I wanted to see and where I wanted to go because uh, SGIA is massive um, and uh, always fun locations. <laughs> There's always fun locations for SGIA. So um, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to do it right, you should at least attend one trade show, try it once. It is a lot of fun. It is incredibly educational. Um, and remember, as the attendee of the show, you are not obligated to buy anything. Just walk away if you need to. Um, so don't be afraid of the salespeople. Don't be afraid of being offered things. Uh, just smile, nod, say thank you, and walk away. Uh, if nothing else, it allows you to see what else is out there, and you never know who you're going to meet. Networking is phenomenal at trade shows as well. You'll meet other people who are garment decorators. One of my favorite things is uh, taking a 10-15 minute break when I'm at a trade show, like an ISS show, and just walk over to the cafeteria area, and you'll find people over there sitting with one another who don't know each other who are talking about their garment decoration industry, their garment decoration businesses, rather, and actually exchanging information and networking and talking about, well, here's what I do and here's my suggestion. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So attend a trade show if you're going to stay current and you're going to keep up with the trends. Uh, another good way to stay current is to subscribe, to subscribe to blogs and participate in social media. There are a lot of blogs out there. Um, I am partial to our blog at Transfer Express. Our marketing team, our content team does a fantastic job of putting together a lot of really interesting topics. Um, but not just that, but social media. Social media is a, a very richly active option in our industry, in the garment decoration industry. There are a lot of people who spend time uh, on the message boards and on Facebook and so forth. And uh, there's people who have reputations for doing just that, actually. Um, but you, you can learn a lot about what's current, what's popular, just by keeping up with a couple different Facebook pages and seeing what other people are doing. Um, and then blogs like our Transfer Express blog, we do our best to keep up with the times as well. And if we catch wind of a trend that's happening, we will absolutely push that out to you guys because you are the ones that drive the industry. So uh, it bears repeating. But so uh, that's, that's the gist of number two here. The world is changing. Stay current. Uh, garment decoration is an industry, whether you're going to screen print or you're going to do transfers or you're going to embroider, there is always something new happening. There's always something new going down. And you can either roll with it or you can fight against it. And uh, uh, trust us when we tell you that rolling with it is the better option. OK, so number three is learn to say no. Um, if you've ever attended one of my webinars before, you've probably heard me uh, say the phrase, 
I come from an entrepreneurial family. Um, my whole family, my extended family, my father, uh, all businessmen, uh, not the t-shirt industry necessarily, but uh, um, so this is one of these things that I think every entrepreneur needs to learn. And in the t-shirt industry, this is very, very true. Um, not every order is a good order. Uh, you have to ask yourself, uh, it, it, before I accept this order, number one, am I going to make money? Now, I know that sounds like a, like a weird question, like, well, of course I'm going to make money. That's the point of taking orders from customers, right? Stop and think about what they're asking you to do. Um, I, I made this mistake. I, I never started a legitimate t-shirt business myself, but I did a side hustle for a lot of years where I was making money on, on pressing shirts. And I made this horrible mistake with a, uh, a karate dojo, actually. And uh, the gentleman who owned it had wanted to do a transfer on the muff pocket of these hoodies and then a transfer on each shoulder and then a transfer on the back and then a transfer on the front. And the creative artist in me thought, ooh, this is going to look so cool. Um, what I discovered afterwards is that all the time it was taking me to put these hoodies together because of all the application on them. And then he ordered 200 of them to boot. I, I should have thought this through a little bit more. In the end, I, I really regretted taking the order because I ended up spending so much time on them that I, I made virtually no money at all. And by the time I realized I'd made a mistake, I had to call a friend in to help me press them. And then I had to, you know, sweeten the pot for him and give him a little bit of the cut. And it, it just, in the end, in the end, it was uh, not a good way to start my side hustle. So <laughs> learn when to say no. Um, also, uh, another thing to ask yourself is what I do. Does this order fit into my uh, my products that I offer already? If you don't have a hat press, for example, if you don't have a hat press, then don't accept an offer to do hats. You're not going to have a good way to do it. Uh, there's not going to be any easy way to make it happen unless you've already got the cash or you've already got the uh, plan to invest in a hat press. Um, don't accept an order that you're not going to be capable of doing properly. Uh, if the thought goes through your head, well, you know, I, I could try pressing hats on my on my regular shirt press. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, make sure before you accept an order that it's actually something that you are capable of doing and that it's something that you do do. And can I hit the deadline? This is a big deal in our industry. If you have not learned this yet, um, let me assure you that the delivery time is a big deal. People will remember if you delivered on time or not, and if you delivered accurately. If you cannot deliver on time, if you can't hit the promise you've made your customer, then you absolutely shoot yourself in the foot. And especially, this is something we've heard for years from our, our customers that are out in uh, rural, more rural areas. If you are in an area that doesn't have a lot of choices in terms of garment decoration to begin with, then not being able to hit your deliveries and not being able to actually uh, deliver when you say you will, that, that does not help you in any capacity. So in the end, learn how to say no because there will be times as an entrepreneur, uh, odds are good, that you're going to come up across an order where you're going, gosh, I, I've got this going on, I've got this going on, I've got this going on. And there's always the tempt of saying, well, you know, I, I, I need the money, I want the money, I'm, I'm here to make money. Well, yeah, that's true. But think it through a little further. Can I accomplish it? Can I do it? Am I going to be pushing other orders aside? Am I going to be uh, not being able to follow through with the promises I've made? Because these are all things that, on some level, are you going to get paid for the order that you just took? Sure. But the effects of that order will be felt later down the road. And you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot that way. It's just not worth it. All right. Number four, nobody cares about you. Make it about them. <laughs> so um, this is one of those truths that as an entrepreneur, you just need to accept it when you're working directly with the consumer um, like a, a t-shirt business is going to. Um, uh, you, you have to make it all about the customer. All right. So what, how are you solving their needs? What are you doing that is going to attract them to your shop? What are you doing that is going to make them want to go with you? What services are you offering that is going to make their life easier? It is all about them. So um, we've got a couple suggestions here. So benefits that Transfer Express can help you in terms of uh, things you can offer to your customer. You can create artwork through our website and our idea book. You've got access to over uh, 12,000 different pieces of artwork using our resources, you can make artwork for them. So when that baseball team walks in your walks in your shop and says, hey, we need baseball jerseys, but 
you know, oh, just a regular script and tail will work. Well, crack open the catalog, pick a script and tail, roll with it. Uh, you can produce instant proofs on apparel using easy view on transferexpress.com. You can not only put the artwork together, but then you can actually view what the artwork will look like on a garment, like you can see on the picture to the right there, that is a, a picture off of our website. So we put that uh, design together for Lady Wildcat, and then we went through the garment choices and chose that uh, uh, two color, I think that's some kind of three quarter sleeve raglan maybe. Um, and then boom, it, it only takes a couple minutes to accomplish it. Uh, and then we actually get a vision of what the transfer is gonna look like on an actual person. So uh, this is something that you can do for your customer. You can show them what it's gonna look like on a person. Um, on time delivery, Transfer Express, we guarantee on time delivery. Um, custom order forms, we can help you out with that. We've got order forms that we can, uh, you can download from us. Our mobile designer, individual packaging, that's another fantastic way to uh, handle a team. If you've got team business, don't just deliver the baseball team's jerseys in a couple boxes. Individually bag each baseball jersey, stick one of your business cards in there, slap a sticker on it with your company name. Um, either way, the, the point here is the more you can offer your customer, the more you can solve their needs, the more you're going to attract them. So owning a business, starting your own t-shirt shop, it's not about you. It's about having something to offer to the public, to offer to the customer to bring them to you. Make it all about them. Create an experience that makes them leave your shop and say, gosh, I want to do that again. Number five, it can be exhausting. <laughs> um, this is this general concept is going to come up a couple times here. If if you are going into starting a business thinking that you're going to be able to do it in off time, this is not going to be totally accurate. Unless this is going to be a side hustle for you and you, you know that it's just going to be a thing you do every now and again, that's fine. But if, if you're going to go into this starting a t-shirt business and you're intending for it to be the business, this is this is what you're doing then you have to be aware up front, it can be exhausting. And that's true of any business, not just the t-shirt industry. My father started a machine shop years ago, and that's one of those things that it affects, it affects you. It, it's tiring. Um, so a couple suggestions we have. So how to overcome the exhaustion factor when you're an entrepreneur. Number one, set work hours. And this, this goes against what a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you, um, or, or the way they think by default. Uh, but in the end, setting some kind of barrier, setting some kind of expectations, uh, actually tell yourself that, all right, here are my work hours, here are the hours I'm going to work. When it's outside those work hours, I am going to go back to the family, I'm going to go back to home, I'm going to go back to whatever, or even if it's just about you, here are my work hours, and outside those work hours, I am going to have me time. In the end, setting expectations will help you survive the exhaustion and the stress of being an entrepreneur. Uh, establish a pickup time and place. Um, this is good for your customers. Be clear on where that is. Uh, if you have a home-based business, then this is one of those questions of, all right, do I want people coming to my home? Do I not want to do that? Should we, uh, there's a local Panera, maybe I should tell people to meet me at the Panera, and that's where we'll it, it, come up with these things ahead of time, have a plan. Um, especially if you're going to be a home-based business, maybe it is about establishing those boundaries and those barriers and saying, okay, well, I am going to bring the order to such and such or uh, picking a place outside there. Um, and then email, <clears throat> excuse me, email phone number for business. Um, if you're going to be a home-based business, if you're going to work out of your garage or you're going to work off of your property, it is important for you to be able to distinguish between the two. Don't just use the phone number for your house or don't just use your personal cell phone. Have another cell phone, have a business line, have something that you've established for just the business. Be able to separate those things. Don't just use your personal email. Go create uh, another account. Uh, it's easy enough to create a, <laughs> as many Gmail accounts as you want these days, right? So um, point being, set up some boundaries, set up some barriers, and know when to stop being an entrepreneur for a minute so you can refuel and you can uh, worry about yourself. Because remember, if you work yourself to death, then you're doing nobody any good. So being an entrepreneur is tough, and it's, it's uh, a lot of work and a lot of hours that go into it, but you have to remember to think about yourself as well. 
Number six, it is not about how good you are. It is about how good they think you are. So there are little things that people uh, don't necessarily think about that are actually a big deal. So uh, first of all, return calls. <laughs> if, if somebody calls you and you never call them back or you don't do it in a timely manner, then what kind of reputation are you putting out there? Same thing with emails. Uh, it is 2017. Uh, communicating via email is a fact of life at this point. And if you ignore your inbox and you are not answering your emails, then what message does that send to the people who are emailing you? Um, replying on social media, this is a big deal too. Uh, Facebook especially, they track this kind of stuff. They, uh, uh, the social media outlets these days will actually show statistics and say, hey, this person responds to their messages on a regular basis. Hey, this person doesn't. And again, it sends a negative message if, if you've got you know, a social media outlet and you took the time to make the page, but then you're not responding to it. Um, definitely not helpful. And as, a, as I said it earlier, delivering on time, another big deal. Um, it, it's one of those that if you can't deliver on the things that you've promised, then you lose your credibility. Um, but in the end, uh, in the end, it's not about how good you are. It's about how good they think you are. So return calls, return emails. When people reach out to you, reach back. Take the time. Find the time. Uh, you are your own brand as well. You have to stand out. Um, so uh, I will tell you from my experience at trade shows that it's always interesting to me to talk to the people who have gone and started their own successful t-shirt businesses and to see how they present themselves. Um, it, it's always interesting to see the people who come up in just plain t-shirts and jeans and hand you a business card that's pretty nondescript plain and tell you that, hey, I started a t-shirt business. Well, you're not doing a great job of it so far. You are your brand. Represent that. Uh, when you go to something like a trade show, wear your brand, wear your garment, wear the thing that represents you, and have a business card. If you're going to hand out business cards, have one that's unique. Have a unique piece of artwork or one of my favorite ones ever, we, we uh, had a gentleman who gave us his business cards and they were, they were in the shape of t-shirts. I, I couldn't tell you where he got them from, but that was fantastic. That was one of those that I'll, I'll never forget. I couldn't remember his company name off the top of my head, but his business card stuck out in my head. Um, so uh, anyway, point being, you are your own brand. Have business cards, wear your product, uh, stick a decal on your car. That's another fantastic way to get your name out there too, if nothing else. Um, and there are a lot of different places you can get car stickers and outdoor decals that will bear the weather and all that good stuff. Um, there's a million different ways you can do that, and, and it only takes up a little bit of space on your uh, doors or even your back window. Um, decal on your car is a fantastic way to get your name out there. Just make sure if you're going to go that route, remember that uh, you're advertising to people who have a quick couple seconds to look at that before they got to get back to the road. So make sure it's clear what you do. Make sure it's clear that you're decorating t-shirts or embroidering or whatever it may be. Um, and then have samples. Have samples and uh, be smart about your samples. Don't just make them random stuff. Make sure your samples are things that have your name on them, things that have your contact name or contact information on them, that kind of stuff. Along the lines of the whole personal branding thing, you are your brand. Here at Transfer Express, we will assist you with that. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different tools that we can help you with. Uh, our idea book is a fantastic tool. If you are going to start a t-shirt business, our idea book should never be far from you because it is the perfect way to uh, somebody approaches you and say, hey, I need shirts for my church. Flip to the church section, point out some designs, and uh, bam, bam, done. Uh, our color selector is off to the far right, uh, the far top right of this slide. Our color selector is a phenomenal tool. Every person, if you're going to order from us here at Transfer Express, you should have a color selector. Um, the color selector comes as part of our uh, marketing kit, or the color selector can be ordered by itself. Uh, either way, what it is is a live printed sample of every single color in our library. And the important thing to note there is that it is a live sample. It is not just a digital printout picture of our colors. It is actually, essentially, every time we print a color selector, that's a 72 color transfer right there. <laughs> so we, we've actually printed every single color. So fantastic tool for you. And it makes you look good because you can show them right there on the spot. Here are the ink colors that I offer. 
Uh, the picture at the bottom middle of this, you'll notice there are some tiny little folded up t-shirts with transfers on them. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little carabiner uh, clip that is going through uh, what is a grommet in the sleeve of each of those. Um, we have uh, uh, content out there, some, uh, I think we did some blogs, and I think we even did a video of this maybe once upon a time. Um, but uh, what we do is we, we can send you little uh, samples. Um, they're basically four by four samples of all of our products. They're included in our marketing kit. And um, you take those four by four samples and you order just a couple toddler t-shirts. That's what those are there, toddler t-shirts. And you can easily go to a craft store, a Michael's, a Pat Catan's, depending on where you're at in the country, and go to a, a craft store and get a grommeter for real cheap. And you can actually grommet the sleeves of these little toddler shirts and then create your own live shirt sample. I mean, that's a fantastic tool for you to be able to take to a meeting with a client, you know. So uh, anyway, we, we at Transfer Express here will help you establish that personal brand and put all that good stuff together for you. Oh, and there you go. My helper behind the curtain has assisted there. There is a blog online showing you how to make your own samples. So uh, it is out there. All right, number seven, uh, be willing to make sacrifices. Um, dream big, work hard. Uh, it, being an entrepreneur is not easy. If you're expecting a cakewalk, then this is not going to be the task for you. Uh, being a business owner and starting a business is a lot of work. There's going to be a lot of hours. Um, first of all, do your homework. That's kind of been the theme of a couple of our slides is do your homework, know your stuff, know the industry, know what's going on, be up on the news, um, have all of your legal stuff together, be registered in the right places, have the right licenses depending on where you live, uh, make the investment. Um, that's one of those too, that if, if you're going to go into it and say, all right, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to own a t-shirt shop, but gosh, I'm afraid to buy that. I'm afraid to buy that. I'm afraid to buy that. Uh, educate yourself and execute, educate yourself and execute, make the investment, buy the equipment, make the risk, uh, and don't start until you're ready. If, if this is one of those things, that's a whim and you're flying by the seat of your pants, that's not a good thing. Make sure you've got your ducks in a row. Make sure you know all the things that you need to do. If you're going to have an above board business, make sure you've got your license or your permit, whatever whatever's necessary in your state, because every state's a little different. Um, have your stuff together. If you're going to have a successful business and you know you're going to have an online presence, then don't start the business and don't put yourself out there until your presence is there. Get your Facebook uh, page together. Get your website together. Get your domain registered, so on and so forth. Be prepared. There's going to be an uphill battle anyway because of how difficult it is to be an entrepreneur. Have yourself together before you pull the trigger. And that kind of leads into what I was just saying. Number eight, the boring stuff is important. This is one of those facts of life. And uh, being in the industry for a lot of years, I, I think everybody has heard one or two horror stories about what happens to the people who don't get these particular ducks in a row. Um, have have yourself put together with all the legalities and all the paperwork and all the boring stuff. <laughs> uh, have your reseller's license and or your tax ID. This is, uh, it's funny because it's just a small little bullet point on my slide, but it's actually a very big deal. Um, I wish I could sit here and tell you what each of you need to do for where you live, but every state is a tad different. Uh, we did a webinar on this uh, year or two ago where we actually used the state of Ohio as an example since we are located in beautiful Mentor, Ohio here. Uh, we used it, Ohio as an example and it turned out that getting a uh, getting the necessary paperwork together for Ohio was actually incredibly easy uh, going to Ohio.gov's website and it was very plainly simple where I had to click and what I had to do. Um, so uh, every state's a little different but um, you figure that they do make those things easy. Um, have your business checking account ready to go, have an invoicing system, uh, deposit policies, credit card acceptance. This is the kind of stuff you need to think about ahead of time. Don't go into it saying, oh, well, you know, I'll get a square reader and I'll get that all set aside at some point. No, 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 no. That's a big deal. If you're going to accept credit cards, if you're going to accept payments that way, have that set up ahead of time. Think about it ahead of time. Have your business checking account set up ahead of time. Have talked to the bank. Have yourself ready to go. 
the boring stuff. This is all the stuff that I don't know any entrepreneur enjoys this kind of stuff. Have it all ready to go. Make sure you're above board in all the right places. You don't want to inadvertently, accidentally shoot yourself in the foot without even knowing it. Um, and again, I, I think we've all heard stories about the things that can happen, the tax problems or the um, the times when you discover that, oh my gosh, I, I can't order from this company because I'm not a, a properly registered business. Or That's actually a fact of life too. For those of you who aren't familiar, there's a lot of companies in our industry that won't do business with you unless you are actually properly licensed or have your tax ID or have your uh, necessary paperwork. So that's even a, a big deal for that. Uh, there are suppliers you wouldn't be able to go to unless you're set up properly. So you definitely want to have all that legal stuff taken care of ahead of time. Oh, <laughs> Teresa Sykes, that's actually a fantastic suggestion, Teresa. Find an accountant. That is a fantastic one that I don't have on here. Find an accountant. That's one of those things that if, if you're going to be properly above board, if you're going to do this the right way, then you know that come tax time, this is not going to be one of those wham-bam things done. Um, you want to make sure you have an accountant, you know somebody or have somebody already who you've gone to and established, here's what I'm doing, here's what I want to do, what are the right steps, help me out. Um, definitely a great suggestion, Teresa. All right. All right, everybody. This is one of those truths. Are you ready for this? You are going to make mistakes. Let it sink in for a second. You are going to make mistakes. We don't try to. We don't want to. It is a fact of life. You are going to make mistakes. Um, we have all done this before. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was sure in my first nine months of working here at Transfer Express uh, when I started in our call center and I sent out a 500-piece order that said Besecket Ball instead of Basketball. I was sure that I was going to be fired for Besecket Ball. <laughs> um, uh, mistakes happen, and, and the catch to this, guys, is that when you do make that mistake, you learn from it. You apply the lesson. Don't wallow in it. Don't beat yourself up over it. Again, you're an entrepreneur. You're already tackling the hard stuff by starting your own business. Don't beat yourself up unnecessarily. You made a mistake. How do I make sure I don't do it again? And you move on. Um, so fantastic picture here. <laughs> Spelling, spelling errors, spelling errors everywhere, ever, everywhere. <laughs> um, so uh, a great tip here in terms of preventing errors, use our help. At Transfer Express, we will help you in a whole bunch of different ways on what to do about this. Um, oh, oh, Teresa, it's bad when you do the two shirt, two, do the shirts two years in a row and do not catch it. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. Um, Easy View has a spell check option uh, when you use Chrome. That is a fantastic uh, piece of advice there. If you're going to use our Easy View function to design t-shirts, use the Chrome browser because there is a spell check function that is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, if you look at the, the meme here, Woody and Buzz, uh, what's funny about this is that you don't necessarily catch the spelling errors that are right off the bat. Did anybody not notice them? Spelling and everywhere. Um, it, it's it's funny how the human brain works, and you don't necessarily notice these types of things. So uh, God bless Chrome for pointing out our spelling mistakes. <laughs> um, that is a, a very beautiful thing. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our trained dealer service staff is available from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. I can vouch for this. I spent uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of years here at Transfer Express. Hiring and training our customer service team. They are uh, a dedicated group of ladies and gents. They are educated on as much industry information as they possibly can be. Uh, if you have questions of any flavor, any any topic you could possibly imagine, um, whether you've made the mistake already or you're afraid you're going to make a mistake or you're trying to prevent mistakes, regardless of what the question is, call our customer service team and ask them. Even if it's one of those things where you're sitting there thinking, well, gosh, I, I hate to ask somebody. Nope, nope, nope. Take the minute to call us. 
our customer service staff will answer your questions for you. Even if it seems like something that's not totally up our alley at Transfer Express, we are plugged into the whole industry and we are here to make your business successful. We are here to be your business partner. So if you have a question, even if it's out of our wheelhouse, give us a star. Uh, customer service is stellar. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Uh, our customer service reps are trained very extensively um, and, again, uh, try to keep up with everything going on in our industry. So definitely, if you ever have questions, call us and ask us this stuff. Um, oh, thank you, Michelle. Michelle says uh, you have an amazing dealer staff, uh, very helpful, and always happy to answer those silly questions. Love them. Uh, you know what? Here's the funny thing about that, Michelle, is that no question is a silly question. Honest to gosh, you, you will learn this in this industry. No question is a silly question. I, uh, years ago when I was still managing our customer service team, I had a customer call up and tell us, uh, you know what, I, I have somebody in my shop who wants to use these t-shirts that are made of Cocona. And uh, she wasn't even sure she was going to use our transfers, but she had never heard of this Cocona stuff before. And uh, we told her, okay, all right, hang tight. We'll call you back here. Let us do a little bit of digging. And we did some research. We figured out what it was. It's recycled coconut husks. And All right, all right, so what can we put on it? What can you do? Like, how can you decorate cocona? And it's, uh, just, it's one of those things where if, if you have those kind of questions, we will help you out. We'll do our best to assist you in any way that we can. Uh, if you cannot phone call, if you cannot call us, then uh, definitely shoot us an email, whether it's after hours or you are uh, unable to call for other reasons. Uh, info at transferexpress.com is a very uh, dedicated group of people that will answer those emails um, uh, constantly. <laughs> so don't don't hesitate. If you if you are after hours and you have a disaster unfolding, you have something happening. Um, I can't promise we're going to have the solution to every disaster, but we are here to be your business partner, and that means that we will help you in any way that we can. So if it's after hours and uh, you have a problem of some kind, shoot us an email. Uh, keep in mind it's not going to be an instantaneous answer, but we do check that on a regular basis outside of regular work hours. Oh, okay. This is my favorite one. So if nothing else, guys, if you don't if you don't absorb anything else that I've said today, this is the one. This is the slide. Are you ready for this? Use the application instructions that are provided with every order. All right. Even if you feel like, you know what, I've done this before. I have used goof proof transfers or I've used ElastiPrints. I already know how these work. Just just take a second to read the application instructions. Just check them. Even if you feel like you know the product. Application instructions are one of those things that people breeze past, people forget to look at, and it is it is incredible what can happen. <laughs> uh, the uh, um, there you go, Teresa. I have them filed in a notebook. Beautiful way to do it. Um, the picture on the right here is actually a, a polypropylene bag. I don't know if uh, everyone's familiar with polypropylene. It's a sort of a polyester substitute that melts at a very low temperature, unfortunately. It's very cheap to make, but it's uh, not very heat resistant. And uh, somebody somebody tried to apply a goof-proof transfer to a polypropylene bag. Uh, goof-proof is 365 degrees, and 365 degrees is well over the melting point for polypropylene. So uh, somebody did not read their application instructions. Somebody did not get familiar with what they were doing before they did it. Uh, and uh, that polypropylene melted. <laughs> and whoever did this one, uh, they were lucky because the polypropylene melted to the paper. I, I once spent an evening cleaning a melted polypropylene bag off of the top of a heat press. <laughs> it was my own fault. I, I was not familiar with polypropylene, and I did not do what I'm preaching to you all right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I melted that bag to the top of that press and uh, spent the better part of an evening cleaning it off. So uh, read the application instructions. Know what you're doing. This is, this is going to be the easiest way to avoid a lot of the mistakes you can make in our industry is read the instructions and know what you're applying on. Um, and again, see the previous slides. <laughs> if you don't know what you're applying on, if somebody throws something weird at you, stop and ask about it. Find out. Don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> New stuff every day happening in our, our industry, I promise. All right, everybody. So there you have it. There was our... Uh... <laughs> 
That's fantastic. Our uh, our, our uh, general manager, Jason Ziga, is on the line here. And Jason says, I did want at a trade show in front of Ted Stahl, Ace Palm. Oh, gosh, that's a terrible feeling. <laughs> that moment that you put a uh, transfer on upside down and stick it to the press. That's never fun. Never fun. All right, guys. So there you go. Nine, nine struggles that every business faces and how to avoid them. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. You were a fun group, very talkative. Um, so if you have questions, we uh, threw the email out there, but I'll throw it out there again. Info at transferexpress.com. Shoot us an email. Doesn't matter the time. Uh, if it's in business hours, give us a call. Uh, our phone number is at the bottom there. Um, our blog, check our blog out if you're not subscribed already. Uh, definitely subscribe to it. We will not blow your inbox up. We do not, we're not one of those people that puts out something every day and you're going to suddenly, you know, oh my God, there's so much stuff, I want to get rid of it. Um, so uh, uh, hit the blog up, check us out. Um, and our next webinar, if you are so inclined, is going to be December 14th, Thursday. It's going to be Choosing Your Team Uniforms, and it will be at 2 p.m., same time, same place. So uh, definitely come join us, and uh, thank you all for joining me today. I appreciate it, and have a uh, fantastic rest of your day, folks.